And this is WNYC FM 93.9, New York Public Radio. And we'll be joining new sounds in progress. Tonight, John Schaefer is featuring members of the group Oregon, with, of course, recordings from that ensemble as well. Guitarist Ralph Towner and bassist Glenn Moore, as well as Reedman Paul McCandless, are on new sounds tonight. Let's join the music in progress. That piece is called Pageant. It was uh, uh, work from the group Oregon, uh, two of whose members are with me in the studio at the moment, and the the other two will hopefully be joining us before we wrap up the proceedings today on New Sounds. Uh, Glenn Moore and Trillick Gortu, bass player and percussionist respectively, are sitting in at the moment. Pageant was written by the group's guitarist, Ralph Towner, and the fourth member is um, Paul McCandless, who plays various reed instruments. Now, Glenn, there's been a definite change in in sound over the past couple of years pageant is has a lot of electronic keyboards equitopia had the same and before that there really hadn't been a heavy it'd been an occasional presence of electronics but not really a heavy one well since uh, in 1981 ralph bought his first synthesizer when he moved to the west coast and uh began writing a uh a genre of peace that appeared as the rapids ecotopia was also such a piece and now uh pageant uh and twice around the sun i guess those are the the big synthesizer pieces really orchestral pieces that ralph's conceived for us and uh so the electronics is it's been working its way in now for this entire decade yeah and uh with the presence of tree lock the uh rhythmic oomph is really there and uh so these pieces have uh become huge pieces uh, in the spirit of things that we would have liked to have done in the days when weather report was first out and we were just beginning but uh the electronics weren't sophisticated enough at that point to really be able to mix them with acoustic instruments in a performance circumstance and it's been gradual though the the uh in the early days i was the first one amplified in right the, group. Uh, the bass is from 1715 but i have two beautiful lexicon units that let me participate in the 20th century uh, in the 20th century uh, <laughs> rather well and the walter woods amplifiers for that instrument are are magnificent and so i'm not hauling the violin out anymore but i have so much uh additional high end on the bass now because of the uh, electronics and because of these marvelous lexicon units that i can now uh do a great number of things mm-hmm. from the bass well some of the other changes in sound i mean paul McCandless, and hopefully he'll be here to tell us a bit about this himself, but oboe seemed to be his primary instrument when the group started. There's more and more sax. Yes. And uh, whereas Colin Walcott was very heavily into tabla and other types of hand percussion, Trilloch, you play a lot of trap set, a lot of kit on, on the, oh, uh, yeah, with the oh, group. Yeah. So it's not trap set, it's just a... a uh, impression of a, dr- a trap set. It's not really a trap set. <laughs> there, there's no bass drum to it. Uh huh. It's just the impression of a trap set. It's not a trap set. <laughs> okay. Uh, you and Ralph actually uh, co-wrote a piece together, which which we'll hear in this next set. Mm-hmm. Uh, something which will appeal to our well, maybe it won't appeal to our New York audience, which spends so much time riding on this train. The piece is called "Riding the D Train." I think he had a, a motive and. I just played along with him and we did it on the spot, the composition. Mm. Like, like we normally, I think one of the great trademarks of Oregon is to play on the spot. Yeah. And we do it live too, so. This is just the two of you, just you and Ralph? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll follow that with something that'll bring in the, uh, the whole quartet and uh, another of uh, the, the composed pieces called Hand in Hand. 
And again, this is music from the group Oregon from their latest release, 45th Parallel. Just heard two more works from 45th Parallel, new compact disc from the group Oregon. I'm John Schaefer, and you're listening to New Sounds. We're listening to some music today from the group Oregon, two of whose members are still with me in the studio on this edition of New Sounds, uh, Glenn Moore and, and Trillick Gortu. What's what's all the snickering over there? You, you said still with... The <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've been here for days. <laughs> Yeah, we're still waiting on uh, on Paul and Ralph, Paul McCandless and Ralph Towner, but uh, New York being what it is, there are many, many distractions. Yeah. Tremendous. A lot of traffic, I guess. Yeah, That's always a convenient excuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the distractions. <laughs> uh, all right, 45th Parallel is, is the name of, of the recording. Now, this is something that Paul was raving about last time he was here in the studio playing with Art Land. He said, oh, you can wait till you hear the new Oregon record. It's like one of the best we've ever made. He was really, you know, just really raving about this. And just wondering how the rest of you felt. I think he's right. I feel the same. I think we put in a lot of effort, all, all the four of us. There's Paul. Yeah, and right. there's Ralph. Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> so he can tell him more now. All right, so we're all here. Here we are. <laughs> uh, it's funny, Paul, actually, we were just talking about um, the fact that last time you were here with Art, you were, you know, really saying that this was just a record that you were really proud of and really That's looking right. forward to its release. And uh, and we were just at that point where Trillick was agreeing with you, and I'm sure Glenn was just about to say something equally. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're making faces. Now, why are you doing that? No, I was ready to uh, to talk about it. Uh, because this was the uh, this was the first project that uh, we had produced ourselves, having done the last uh, three productions with uh, Manfred Eicher under his full and wily eye. Yeah, this was uh, the first record that the four of us had produced together under without uh, just by yourselves, yeah, yeah. without a producer. So uh, it was definitely special, and the the input. Uh, from Tree Lock particularly was uh, spectacular. I mm -hmm. could get a great drum sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's, that's an impression of a drum sound, right? Just, just the impression of the drum sound. <laughs> Trillick was explaining the difference between the drum kit and the impression of a drum kit. Uh, right. So, Ralph, uh, one of the pieces on this recording is actually something that you know, people who followed your career will will know the the piece beneath an evening sky. This is something that you did, what, twelve years ago? Yeah, that's been a while ago. And that was that was on the album, old friends, new friends. My God, you get an award for this. <laughs> that was that was genuine. Uh, people in the uh, listening audience, he didn't ha read that. What is the English horn vehicle? And uh, uh, we don't have a lot of English horn vehicles, but I've been we've been playing it for a few years, and and uh, it. it you know, it was worth. We liked it to keep in touch with the the old stuff as well as our new stuff. We'll hear that piece, <laughs> and we'll also hear Glenn your contribution to the disc, which is a vocal piece. Yes. Uh, this is this is a first for you guys, right? It is. Uh, it is. Nancy King, who is who is this? Nancy King is a a wonderful vocalist uh, who grew up in Eugene, Oregon, where Ralph and I went to school many years ago, and. About 1960 or 61, we met Nancy, and we've we've been knowing her ever since. And in the last few years, I've been doing a great deal of duet work with her. And uh, two years ago, uh, with my wife Samantha, uh, we began writing songs, uh, which Nancy has been singing. 
and when it came time to do this album, because we were recording in Portland, Oregon, because it was possible, well, we invited Nancy to come and to try this piece and see if it felt like it was something that Oregon can do. And uh, it was very good. Mm -hmm. had a good feeling to it. And All right. So it's our first... The piece is called uh, Chihuahua Dreams, and uh, it's a composition by... Glenn and Samantha Moore, and we'll precede that actually with this uh, old favorite from Ralph Towner, Beneath an Evening Sky. Both of them are from the latest Oregon compact disc release called 45th Parallel on this edition of New Sounds. We've just heard two more excerpts from 45th Parallel, the latest release by the group Oregon, and uh, your first album for CBS is this? Yes, yeah, the, CBS the, Portrait. The peregrination from label to label continues. Uh, we, we heard a piece called Chihuahua Dreams. Now, that's a vocal piece, and it's the first time you worked with a vocalist. Is it the first time that the quartet has worked with another musician? Uh, not actually. We, we did a, uh, a number of records in the Vanguard days, that included other uh, musicians. Uh, it was a record called Friends that uh, uh, Benny Wallace appeared on this record and David Earl Johnson who played congas on that record. That was quite exciting. And Elvin. Uh, then we did a record with who? Elvin Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Elvin Jones. That's Elvin right. Jones. The great right. Elvin Jones. Now that seems to be somehow the the balance that the four of you have just innately feel with each other when you're playing you, you have to kind of temper that a bit i would think well it's it's a you know we've got a big range of responses and uh adding one other person nancy comes very clearly from the jazz tradition i mean you'll hear a shooby ooby here sure. and there but uh she's incredibly resourceful she's like she lands on her feet in the most amazing ways and uh she really transcends the the bop tradition that she comes from and uh Actually, it uh, elicited one of the hotter 12-string solos that I've heard out of Ralph in quite a while. So it's, in a way, I mean, we weren't really rapping around Nancy. Her, her style is pretty flexible, mm -hmm. and uh, we play the way we play. And uh, Glenn's tunes also bring another flavor out that, uh, you know, has a kind of a spiky kind of uh, elemental quality to it. Yeah. This is New Sounds, and a quick reminder before we push on that support for the national distribution of New Sounds comes from National Public Radio member stations and the National Endowment for the Arts, a contributor to the NPR Arts and Performance Fund. New Sounds is a production of WNYC, New York Public Radio, and is distributed by NPR, National Public Radio. Ralph, we were, uh, Glenn was talking before about how this record is a, there's a lot more composed as opposed to free pieces. Mm -hmm. um, despite which the record comes out sounding considerably closer to what we would call mainstream jazz than, than other Oregon records, which were really just impossible to categorize easily. Mm -hmm. The jazz thing isn't... I'm, I'm not discovering that. Like, Glenn and I... I mean, I worked with Nancy King, the vocalist, in 1965. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and I made my living, as, a, as I've told you before, you know, as a jazz pianist. And when I hit, got to New York in 69, I mean, or 68, I... I worked as a jazz. That was my my vehicle. You can't go take your classical guitar and go sit in with Elvin or something, you know, right. or, or you know, and or make that those connections. Part of my tradition, as well as being my other half, was the uh, as a, a classical Cla guitar strictly, right. and I'd, somehow these things have uh, come together, you know. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I say that this this isn't like oh now we'll try to be jazzy. Yeah, know? I mean it's it, always it, been there. It, I mean, well, it wasn't a, really readily available I mean, until until Treelock joined us because Treelock has tremendous jazz experience. I mean, he's a uh, live, real jazz musician, and so now, in a, in a funny way, it's, it's not as if I'm uh, creating something new. I'm able to go all the way back to pre my pre organ days to, to include in this group music that didn't work as well 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 before uh, before Treelock. Uh, we're actually going to hear Paul's contribution to the disc next, a piece called Urumchi. Urumchi. What yeah. kind of title is that? Uh, it's a uh, title from a map, uh, basically. Oh, it's so this a, is a real geographical CD. Yeah, uh, it actually CD. is, although it's unreal to me because I've never been there. Uh, I was speaking to Glenn and Samantha. We were kind of fishing around for a title, and Samantha... Uh, uh, considered that it, she she felt like it was sort of like something in the time of Alexander the Great. She got some kind of a 
she was able to generate some images like that with this music, and she considered uh, naming it Bucephalus, uh, which was Alexander the Great's f horse trigger, if you would. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you knew about that. You knew that that was his horse, huh? Yeah, yeah. Wow. that's quite well, a famous horse. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, he's he's no man of war, but but he's a famous horse in his own right. Yeah. Horses in history. What's, yeah. the, what's the Urdu word for uh, Bucephalus? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Bucephalus. I think it's Bucephalus. Getting into the abstract here. <laughs> so uh, I thought it sounded like a disease, and I didn't quite want to use the title, <laughs> even even though I recognized it. I wasn't sure that everybody else would, and I didn't want to do a lot of explaining. So I, I picked something kind of that was at the far reaches of Alexander the Great's uh, peregrinations, mm -hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> Took, came up with a That's a word for today, right? Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. snort. Peregrination. Peregrination is a, a third time. A little, a little rubber chicken pops out of the ceiling. <laughs> and bells go off whenever anyone says peregrination. All right. So Urumqi is where? Where is this place? Uh, it's in uh, Mongolia. It's mm -hmm. in a, you know, uh, like the Gobi Desert, large mm -hmm. open spaces. Okay. It's also on the new Oregon CD. So let's let's listen to it. Uh, music written by Paul McCandless and played by my guest today, the members of the group Oregon. Listening today to some music from Oregon from their latest CD release called 45th Parallel. That piece is called Urumchi, and it was written by Paul McCandless, uh, who's playing a lot more sax these days. We were talking a little bit about this before. Uh, pretty heavy in the oboe earlier on in Oregon records, uh, some English horn, and then these days uh, it seems to be. Uh, a bit more weighted towards the saxophone end of things. The single yeah, we're reads. doing we're doing music that's that's a little more suited to the saxophone. Besides the obvious uh, practicalities of being heard mm -hmm. uh, over over quite an excitable drummer and uh, some <laughs> electronic keyboards, which no matter how much you turn the oboe up, you'll never get on top of that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, beyond that, stylistically, uh, so we're doing music that is. Uh, that needs the big, wide, dynamic range of the saxophone and a breadth of tone. You get a lot of bang for your buck for the <laughs> saxophone. So that's that's, I, and I'm enjoying playing it a lot. I've sort of developed over the years my own sound or my own voice on the soprano. So I feel it's as much my instrument as uh, the oboe and the English horn these days. And of course, the fact that the oboe is a notoriously difficult instrument to play, I'm sure, has nothing Just to do nothing with nothing whatsoever, <laughs> or that you have to make reads for it. Right. <laughs> All right. The uh, the piece we'll actually be concluding with today is uh, is uh, called Bombay Vice, and um, <laughs> the the title will give you a, a clue as to who the composer of this piece is, Trillic. This is something that something to do with Bombay. Which the is your, smell your hometown? <laughs> <laughs> Some funk, too. Yeah. Uh, it smells funky, Bombay, sometimes. Yeah, I guess. Um, you, you left Bombay years ago. I mean, you, yeah. You've been in Europe for a number of years before yes. coming to, to... I was in Italy Bombay. also for, mm -hmm. for two years. All right, but now this piece is something that... Now, how does a drummer write a piece? I mean, do you just come up with a rhythm and then ask these guys... Yeah, I you? just came with a... I think with a bass kind of thing and a, and a drum part and rest. You no, know, you had a melody too. Huh? Yeah, I had a melody which didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, you had two melodies. I, I don't want to butt in. He had two melodies and one of them worked and one didn't. And 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 the original melody it was like like I just like that you know we sort of gave his mustache a little trim you know. No, yeah. You can leave that note off and maybe sharp that note. And that's really all. all no, they, really we, good. It, Ralph and everybody really helped me to write this. You know, come up with this thing. <clears throat> and uh, after doing my own record, I, I had some faith in me to to do this. Now, did you write all the stuff on Usfret, your your solo uh, disc? He, almost. Yeah. And there were some traditional things. Right. And with the help of Daniel Goyon. And with the help of your mother. My mother, of course, the traditional thing. So, and rest, uh, and help of Ralph. We did a trio thing with Shankar. Mm -hmm. Alf and me, so yeah, that must be. But I'm not uh, when I play with Oregon. I'm not an Indian musician, right? 
Well, that, that, I think that'll be obvious despite the title of this piece. Uh, it's, it's a pretty kind of, you know, up-tempo affair. Up-tempo, yeah. I think we needed that. <laughs> this and a few of the improvisational pieces are probably some of the brightest tempos that the group has played over the years. It's really, we can do it. And uh, it's really exciting. I noticed that the audience has realized that it's fast also, and they seem to get very excited about it. Uh -huh. is, is that essentially because of the change in percussionists? I mean, was Colin just a more laid-back kind of... I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. say that, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I noticed that Colin, the American, played more tabla than Trillick. Yeah. <laughs> who grew up with well, the, it was more of a jazz musician. Yeah, yeah. Trelock, I mean, but Colin sort of changed his playing as a result of uh, he and Trelock become such great friends. And mm -hmm. and uh, and before we had even two years before we met Trelock, we were getting Trelock's influence through Collins was getting more confident about stepping out and uh, and and using. Uh, yeah, you could hear it in the last too, you know? the last yeah, two albums. I mean, the first that, two that, that was, you did for ECM that was coming through already. Yeah, so Trelock Spirit joined the band there, you know, <laughs> pretty early. I mean. Pumped up old Colin there, and I got the hi hat from C Colin. Uh -huh. The small hat—that's his invention. That he gave it to me when we played together. All right. Well, let's hear this piece written by Trillick or two and uh, played by the group Oregon from their self-produced recording entitled "45th Parallel." Bombay Vice is the name of that piece uh, from the group Oregon, from their latest CD release, 45th Parallel. Uh, guitarist and keyboardist Ralph Towner and uh, reed player Paul McCandless have joined us in the studio. Glenn Moore, the bass player, Trilla Gortu, the percussionist, have been with us uh, all through the show today. And uh, now that this has been released and you've done a bit of touring, what, what happens in the, the next couple of months? You all break up and do solo things again? Or? Yeah. Basically, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. All right. Well, great. Um, look forward to seeing you maybe in the fall if you come through or whenever. Well, thanks for having us. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Darren. Thanks. New Sounds is the program, and we have been speaking with the members of the group Oregon, and uh, starting up now in the background is the title track from Oregon's album Crossing. And this will feature the... Uh, original percussionist with the group Colin Walcott along with Ralph Towner, Paul McCandless and Glenn Moore and uh, while it plays let me remind you that if you'd like a copy of the playlist for this edition of New Sounds all you need to do is drop us a line at the usual address and mention the program number today it's program number 294 our address is New Sounds care of WNYC 1 Center Street New York, New York 1007. I'm John Schaefer. Hope you've been enjoying this edition of New Sounds, our program of new and unusual music. And here once again is a final piece of music from the group Oregon. <laughs>